I am angry. I was involved with a Sufi group which is connected with the Sufi movement here in the Netherlands. This was an unpleasant experience and I am very angry about it. The purpose of this video is to give my anger a right to exist. The goal is not to kick against other people short-sightedly. I see this video as doing inner work. I am struggling with anger that has nowhere to go. That is also the meaning of the Sufi logo in the intro animation, which comes up as a muzzle, as a symbol of a blockage for the expression of anger. That is why I create this video to talk about what is going on inside of me, about my perceptions and my feelings. In my past, I suppressed my anger a lot, and I'm done with that. I am serious when I say that I would rather hold on to my anger for too long now than that I suppress the anger again. I would rather be whole than good. I will, however, discuss what it is that I am angry about, but not to point my finger at other people short-sightedly or to shift blame on them so that I do not have to look at myself. The goal is to give my anger a right to exist. That is why I will not name the specific group or the people that I speak about. I did also contact the main office of the Sufi movement about my situation and they also did not seem to be focused on connection and they also did not seem to consider my emotional needs in this matter. That is why I dare to consider the possibility of a lack of social emotional skills among the Sufis which may be a thing beyond just the specific group I was involved with. My interest in Sufism was sparked after I listened to a book titled Love is a Fire and I am Wood. I became more enthusiastic about Sufism by two sp statements especially. Statement one is Sufism is what it is for you personally. And statement two is that there are more Sufis outside of Sufism than inside. This made me feel that Sufi philosophy itself states that objective Sufism does not exist and that Sufism seeks to reduce tunnel visions. When I asked if I could share something about system thinking at the Sufi meeting, they said no because they want to stick to Sufism. But with this wording they claim objective Sufism, which is the opposite of what I understand Sufism to be. It would have been totally different if they would have said no because they want to stick to what Sufism means for them. Then it would all have checked out again because then a healthier relationship perspective would become the basis from which tunnel visions can also be granted a right to exist without being swallowed up by those tunnel visions. The framework that leaders think they need is really important too. And this way, leaders can build a framework that works for them from a place of relationship instead of from a place of dogma. These nuances are so essential for me because I need a basis of relationship instead of a basis of dogma. Perhaps it did not really help my connection with the Sufis that I had some despair going on about not being understood. But I am really angry that they confused my despair with aggression. I was not aggressive at all when I communicated about objective Sufism versus subjective Sufism. The realization that the Sufis are building a very stuffy and a very small holy house with very narrow tunnel vision made me feel like they committed high treason. How I understand Sufism to be is so beautiful and it has such a transformative potential and that is why it feels like the Sufis are destroying Sufism, like with a vengeance. I am super convinced that it destroys the world when people are swallowed up by tunnel visions. I myself, I greatly widened my philosoph philosophical horizon compared to how I used to be. I am convinced that my way of systems thinking can create a lot of breathing room and that I can help people get to a point from where we can start searching together how we can reduce our tunnel visions. It is just that with my current philosophical framework I do not fit into any group anymore. 
I so much want to belong somewhere, but I cannot go along with the church anymore, not with the Sant Mat movement and not even with the meditation groups of Eckhart Tolle fans. I put my last hope into Sufism and now that proves to be a dud for me as well. I think that compared to all the groups I was involved with, I never ever experienced such a hard solid wall put up against me as with the Sufis when I tried to connect with them about what was going on inside of me. They do not want to connect at all. They do not even want to try to understand me. Superficially, the Sufis seem very inclusive considering how they seem to want to honor old spiritual traditions. But they do not want a relationship with people that think differently at all. So I say that the Sufis are very exclusive and they do not seek to widen their spirituality at all. They just want to build their museum for the Inyat Khan guy that brought Sufism to Europe. And if that does not float your boat, then you should just go away. Because here it comes, the path is not for everyone. That is what they say then. I understand that it can be difficult for any group if a newbie like me comes along from outside who thinks and speaks differently and even doubts if the entire focus of the group is healthy. But I am angry about their inability to have an open conversation with me because they are only able to explain their vision and how they think. What they did every time was explaining, explaining, explaining. Their explanation did not meet my emotional needs at all, which caused me to get angrier and angrier and angrier. They really lack social emotional skills in this regard. I literally said to them that I do not feel understood because they stuck to explaining all the time. The baffling response, and I'm not joking, was it is uncomfortable to not be understood. Please allow me to explain what I mean. And then the guy got back to explaining. It was utterly bizarre. And I shared something vulnerably about my inclination to want to kick down holy houses, but that I also have a caring side and that I also understand the need for holy houses. That is beautifully balanced. And I speak non-judgmentally about what is going on inside of me at the level of feelings. And I do not say anything about what I want to do at the level of behavior. When I requested a phone call with them, because my anger was only growing and growing, my phone call request was denied because they are not open to me kicking down holy houses. I believe he did not even understand what I mean when I speak about holy houses. I wanted to talk with them exactly about this tendency inside of me to kick down holy houses because I want to connect with them about it. It is my intention to seek how we can celebrate each other more. Holy houses are exactly what gets in the way of that. But they can only interpret what I say at the level of behavior. They are unwilling to really listen to me at the level of feelings. The lady of the central Sufi office answered my complaint with one single sentence. Would you be willing to forgive us for being only human? This feels like a super caustic forgiveness dogma, which also does not meet me where I am. It does not meet my needs. If I would have been able to let things go, then I would have done so. What she was asking from me here is a very high level of consciousness, which she herself does not grasp yet. If she would have been there herself, then she would have been able to attune to me. So actually what she is asking from me is to make my difficult feelings go away so that she does not have to deal with it. I can only interpret it as that she is asking me to commit spiritual bypassing. Before we can let things go, we have to let in. I am still at the stage of coming in contact with my anger. That is why the dogma of having to get to the pain behind the anger is not helpful for me because I am not there in my processes. And needing to feel that others want to search with me is quite different than one-sidedly making other people responsible for what is going on inside of me. It takes relationship to heal wounds of relationship and that requires other people. 
Sometimes it takes an entire community to be able to hold the intensity that healing requires. Together. So, also from the central Sufi office, I feel this stone wall because I do not feel a focus on relationship. It would have been much more helpful if she had asked me what I feel would help me. And I do not even see how anyone in this situation did anything wrong that has to be forgiven. In everything, I seek rather to reduce thinking in terms of right and wrong, good and bad. For me, it is much more helpful to see forgiveness as a result of relationship rather than as a condition for relationship. I get angry when I get the impression that people think that I think that they do something wrong or when they think that I attack them. No. I get upset when I do not feel a focus on relationship which transcends good and bad. Beyond, beyond what I have said so far, I do still have some smaller thoughts. For example, the leaders of the group did not want to be called leaders, while when push comes to shove, they do not only set themselves up as leader, but as top-down leaders even. When push comes to shove, they will tell people very clearly how things are done. To genuinely dismantle leadership, a deeper inner work is needed, which enables leaderless leadership by standing next to people. It is really not a matter of simply toggling a conceptual switch. At the end of my communication with the leader of the group, he wished for love to replace my anger. After thanking him for that wish, I astutely wished for love to replace their holy house as well. I am proud of having said that. But a deeper understanding of the challenge here is to acknowledge anger as the love that it is. Because anger is love too. Anger cares. Anger cares about something deeply. And the challenge is also to embrace holy houses as love too. Because holy houses are love too for people that need to narrow their perception. But in all this, let us please seek together how we can give each other such acknowledgements. Please let us want to seek how we can celebrate each other more. When we think we found something of which we say, only this is everything, then that leaves no room to search together. There has to be an openness for deconstruction of our belief systems as well, if we want to grow in emotionally healthy spirituality. We do not only need centering practices, but we also need decentering practices to grow in our ability to relate with people that think differently. Getting stuck on owning our findings get in the way of searching together. And that is why I am angry with the Sufis. They do not want together and they do not want to search. I have an idea that may be good for any spiritual group and not only the Sufis. And that idea is uh, to work together with social workers or therapists. I feel that social workers are like the heroes of society today. My wife is such a hero. Perhaps such social workers can also help spiritual leaders navigate tensions with neurodivergent people like me. And perhaps they can even participate in difficult conversations. <laughs>